Victoria's Secret has announced a plan to take to the catwalk once again with a new version of its fashion show. After experimenting with plus size models, disabled models, trans models, a male model, and Megan Rapinoe, Victoria's Secret has decided to try an experimental new format of having the models be really hot chicks. CEO Martin Waters stated, It just came to me one night. I was looking at pictures of our current angels and I said, what if these women were really hot? At first I thought, that's crazy, but I just couldn't get this idea of really hot chicks as models out of my head. And eventually started to think, but what if it's so insane it just might work? Martin states he spent hours just staring at pictures of Megan Rapinoe and then A-B testing those pictures with pictures of really hot chicks and came to the shocking revelation that he much preferred looking at the pictures of really hot chicks and says, if I preferred looking at pictures of really hot chicks, well then maybe there were others out there just like me. But still hesitant to move on his avant-garde idea, Victoria's Secret funded multiple focus groups that confirmed the original suspicion that there might be something to this idea of using really hot chicks as models. With factory worker Dave Thompson describing the really hot chicks as much hotter. When asked about the blowback to the controversial new idea, representatives from Victoria's Secret have said, listen, any new idea as bold as really hot chicks as models will be met with some skepticism, and we're gonna have to be very careful how we introduce it to the public, but Martin seems very convinced that this really hot chick thing has legs. Victoria's Secret has also stated that despite the favorable reviews from online critics, the current method has also led to constant stream of criticism demanding even less hot chicks, none of which has translated into sales. So it will be hard for the brand to bleed any more money than it already is. The boys, the boys cast, the lads, the boys cast, the dudes, we pair ourselves for boys cast, the bros, yes, the boys cast, the homies, yes, the boys cast, the dudes, yes, the boys cast, the boys cast. The boys cast. Happy Halloween, everybody, almost. <laughs> Uh, it does sort of seem that Halloween's getting overshadowed by all of the other stuff. <laughs> all the other spooky people out there. I was loving me and Johnny were doing a thing, but I was uh, saying that everyone in New York is dr dressed up and asking them what they're dressed up as. And you're like, okay, we got a couple here that decided to go as a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's a fun costume. Okay, we got a group of college students dressing up like homeless people here. <laughs> oh, we got Hamas protester in the house tonight. Okay, there's a, the one with the edgy costume. <laughs> go to Williamsburg. <laughs> All the fucking rabbis. You go, what are you guys supposed to be? What we have here is a, well, we have a Zionist here. It's just, yeah, it's just a... <laughs> No, what I was thinking. Well, where's, I mean, where's the Palestinian baby blood? Uh, you're missing that for your costume. Do you think that? Okay, here's you tell me if these are good offensive. I, I think the the everything's got flipped on its head a little bit, but there's going to be a couple people that go with offensive ones. So I'm throwing these out there. I think I think like blackface might just be fine. This blackface year. is chill, dude. <laughs> blackface is people go. Thank God, that's okay. all you did. But uh, what if I threw this into you? Yeah. Blackface, but you go as Kanye West Bank. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> okay, so that's an option. Israeli soldier boy, so it's another blackface one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're soldier boy. Soldier boy. But you're like, soldier boy. And crank that Jew with that soldier boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jew. It says something uh, okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. I mean, definitely so, A plus for creativity on this. So it's sort of a surfer thing. Yeah. So it's sort of a mix. You do like a little Jonah Hill, a little bit soldier, and you go, I'm a Hamas hang 10 glider. <laughs> <laughs> but you have like board shorts on you. Dude, I want some just like idiot. Someone's going as Dead Festival goer. Someone's for sure. No, but someone's just walking around like, you know, walking up one of the avenues, just like dragging behind them this giant parachute for their <laughs> costume. I think someone's you know, going to I'm a landed that. Hamas hand glider guy and go, okay. I actually, okay. I have a couple more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's hear them. The Gasmanian devil. <laughs> Then you're right. <laughs> but it's oh, it's a different thing. So you can either do it. You can be the Gasmanian devil, and then you're you're sort of like Gaza. So it's sort of you wreaked havoc on the Gaza Strip, and yeah. then you also have gauze all over you. <laughs> Oh, it's gauze. It's gauze. Well, it's either gotcha, one. It's gotcha, a two. Gotcha. You go with whatever. Gotcha. These are all explainers. <laughs> These are the ones where someone has to ask you what you are. You go. Are you serious? <laughs> you don't get it. Really? Come on. You don't see other gauze. Okay, so with this, it could be me and you. So if you go, um, you dress up, you say you're a podcaster, so you probably want to go as, I guess the biggest ones would be like maybe Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss, maybe sure. something like that. Huberman? And you, yes, but you dress up uh, in a certain costume and you say, I'm a Mossad caster. <laughs> they all rhyme if you haven't figured out my <laughs> format. Okay, how about this? And then this is my last one. Yeah. This is what I'm suggesting for you. Okay. I think you could pull it off given your how nuts you've been on the internet lately. Sure. So you wear... You dress up with like a shark fin, like Jaws and stuff like that. Yeah. 
and but with as a shark with tassels and you're a high interest loan shark <laughs> See, that one won't require any explanation. People, well, it's going to be two fins, one here, one here on the front, a fin on the front, a fin on the top. I go, what are you? <laughs> Me good. and Dave were laughing. We were walking through New York because we, walk, we, we walked uh, probably for about three minutes and we saw four people getting in like full blown arguments, yelling at each other at the yeah. top of their lungs. Oh, yeah. Dave was saying this. <laughs> Lack of diversity and people yelling on the street <laughs> at the top of their lungs. There is a real lack. I've been saying it for a long time. There's a real lack of diversity of people yelling at the absolute top of their lungs in the middle of the street. It's a good thing. You can say anything you want if you frame it as a yeah. lack of diversity. Honestly, I think there's a real lack of diversity in people playing their music really loud at 3 a.m. Yeah, someone street. just walking around with a fucking like literal giant like portable speaker just blasting. It's the lack of diversity in the speaker community. In the, right. the speakers at 3 a.m. community. Yeah. Sad. Sad, really. <laughs> Lack of diversity. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about is kind of uh you know people on like on shows and stuff like that always say what's the best advice and worst advice you always got? Yep. I think the worst advice that anyone ever gives is treat people how they want to be treated. If I actually break it down, that might be the worst Chick advice. advice. It is chicks love saying it, and and I guess Christians sort of like saying it too, right? Isn't that? Sort I mean, of a I guess it is. Thing? Yeah, it is like from the bottom. But it makes no bit. sense if you did that. It'd be like, okay, well then your girlfriend would like to be left alone. <laughs> But really, it's like there's so many things where you go, it's the worst advice possible. That is a good point. Like, a, Although that is if you're like a religious person, then when you just like are ignoring your chick, you'd be like, I'm just... Well, I guess you could say it, but there's so many, there's so many things that I do to other, like any, you know, who people say that people that are bad with people, yeah. anyone that's good with people doesn't treats, have a one size fits all. <laughs> yeah. And you go, how, person, how I want to be treated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, again, like so much of Bible stuff is cause it is really like this manual for just how to be a person. For if some I, people. if I treated people, how I, they wanted to be treated, they would tell me their dad died and I'd make a joke about it. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, don't do that. Cause I don't think everyone wants to be treated how I do. <laughs> <laughs> like the worst advice of all time. And okay, and there's one thing that we have to say that it was a this is a little something for DP. Yeah. For more pleasurable sex, they've done a study. Yeah. And then uh, that says eat first. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> The touch pleasure the touch pleasure centers were higher after a meal than without. So the brain activation was higher after a meal than without. So basically if you're trying to heighten the senses during sex, it says you stuff your face with hoagies. Yeah, I will say well, I went on a date <laughs> once with this girl and I don't know whose idea it was, but we went out for um Brazilian steakhouse. Which What's so is, crazy about that? It's the all you can eat where they have the sword. We well, didn't have to stuff your fat face. Well, you can... we did. <laughs> <laughs> we did Dude you went to a buffet You don't have to get The ninth plate <laughs> Wasn't even ninth It's just like It's all protein So it's so dense Going up so for another one huh? You go it's a buffet They don't. That's the problem Are with you those. familiar With what a buffet is It's not a buffet Because they come to you That's the problem They come with those swords And they go You want some more So you didn't want to be sword? rude You, you just didn't want to be rude Yeah I'll try some of that And then at the end We were just like all right, well, that was a good one. Did you still smash? <laughs> no. It was like, literally, I was just like, I can't. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. <laughs> but stay away from the buffets. Okay, don't go to buffet. I guess, obviously, don't go to a buffet on a first date. It's probably not the move. <laughs> well, it wasn't a first date, but yeah, it was not good. Well, for you, anyways, you could say, I could picture you definitely in the bed, you know, setting the mood, and then you're like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> you can fucking crank the mashed potatoes. Just uh, do you want it to feel good or do you want it to feel good? Dude, as you walk into the bedroom, you just hear, you're like, what's going on there? I'm whisking mashed potatoes. <laughs> I'm trying to access the pleasure centers. <laughs> <laughs> you just pull out the massive tray of fucking hoagies. You know what's crazy? Actually, hold on. Let me take the sweater off. Uh, we Before, can probably still talk like Well, I was good. Well, I didn't know what. Uh, well, oh, what? Well, the the people don't know what's happening right now. Danny's stripping down. All that mashed potato talk got him fucking fired oh, up. Man. I mean, we make clips. I can't if there's a clip and in the middle I have a sweater. Ah, uh, you think the mashed potato thing is you're gonna you're gonna be a clip? Clip it. Never know. That's where your brain's at now. You're already thinking <laughs> clips. <laughs> All right. Okay, this, but this is pretty crazy. So Uber, and by the way. Uh, Uber, it is interesting that uh, someone kind of made this point, but in the contrast of Airbnb, like Uber replaced cabs 
to the degree that cabs are almost going out of business, right? Yeah. And Airbnb replaced hotels for people to the point where people almost never do hotels anymore. And then they switched back. And to lose that kind of a stronghold on a yeah. market, you have to screw up so bad. Well, I think... Dude, they, I, everyone yeah. we know was like, you do Airbnbs now and not things. And now everyone we know doesn't do Airbnbs anymore. I mean, I'm banned for life, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Mashed potatoes all over the fucking... <laughs> Do you put mashed potatoes in the fucking bed cushions? I need it to come. <laughs> yeah, I mean for sure. I, I, I like when I did use Airbnbs, they were good. And then you're like, now you see them all the time. Someone's like 150 a night, and then it's like 400 for after you say a night because like that's the, the problem. It's nuts. So they screwed it up and they let the people uh, go to town charging all these extra fees. But I was on Uber. And this is a lot of the stuff we're sort of talking about. We're talking about the Victoria's Secret thing, how they were doing all that stuff for six years and it was bankrupting them. And then they just went back to really hot chicks, yep. which I'll sort of talk a little bit more about that in a second. But Uber's, this is the ad. And maybe it's because we live in New York. <laughs> Take a peek at this puppy. And I'll describe it to what people it says. It says, smile, traveler. You found a great place to seep, sleep. And it's a dude. And that dude ha is having sex with another man. So he's boning a dude. <laughs> So what's the market How's share? How's the leg like that? Are you sure that's just like a, not a manly woman's? So that's a dude's. Come on, Jared. Whatever your name is. <laughs> you really don't think that's? Yeah, maybe. That's a dude's foot. Oh, he's, oh, his face is pressed up against a window. Yes, he's boning a dude. <laughs> he's got a dude's legs behind his head, and the legs are fucking up in his face. That's so insane. Uber. Okay, I wasn't. Even, by the way, I'm taking an Uber, and it's like, <laughs> if you want to, if you need a good spot to bone a dude, I was like. I don't know, do you? No. Maybe it's one of those predictive things, you know, where people are like, how did Facebook know I wanted to see yes, these Yes, obviously that crossed my mind that I knew you were going to make that joke. <laughs> obviously, I knew bringing this up that that's what Danny's sick mind is. Maybe <laughs> Uber just knows you better than you know yourself. I'm just saying. <laughs> How did they know I wanted to buy that mashed potato <laughs> whisker, <laughs> Ryan? The 55th trip to the village. <laughs> <laughs> you go to, <laughs> I mean you took 95 trips to Jim's bathhouse we could do the math on what you're looking for well you actually did the math wrong because I already got satisfied at the village <laughs> it's a good guess but to be honest if I was going to buy an, a hotel I think out of spite I don't think I would buy a hotel I'm not clicking on an ad that says if you're looking for a good hotel for gay bone and click gay, <laughs> the gay I'll, bone zone I, I'll tell you what I go I'll look for a different place because this sure. isn't going to be working for me yeah, 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 I'll yeah. tell you where I'm not going to be getting a hotel the gay boning because <laughs> I know what I'm going to be seeing both walls are just yeah because like, the problem is Ryan doesn't know if it's going to be his face up against that glass or well, the problem is if you pick that hotel, every you're not gonna be able to sleep because all you're gonna hear is, yeah, yeah, yeah you like that, yeah, you like that, yeah, take that, God. <laughs> That's how they have sex. <laughs> I think it's something like that. <laughs> Dude, it was crazy. You yeah, you like that, Bill? You like that, Terry? Take that, Terry. Yeah, uh, you're fucking good at your job, Bill. You know what you're doing. <laughs> it's not your fucking first rodeo, Bill. Uh, you're not so bad yourself, Terry. So, uh, soon they'll be able to match you. There'll be two people who individually want hotels, and then the drivers will just take you to the same place. Does Uber think it's going to fucking moonlight his grinder? Yeah, they're going to be like a grinder. There's going to be a. Dude, in Toronto, they deliver weed now. I couldn't believe it. Well, that's been going on for a minute, hasn't yeah, it? I don't know. That's. I mean, that seems wild to me that's surprising you can literally yeah. just order like you can just order an eighth and then some dude who's like just shows up and goes here's your weed that's my body's whole company did that that's really it started for you yeah. oh shit yeah well but okay so i actually have one thing but uh about this tour because i just went on tour with uh jj and eric we yeah had a pretty good time but the uh, london uh, the bigger show, the two sold out, the bigger one's on sale, and then Dublin's on sale. Uh, next weekend's Edmonton, Los Angeles, Irvine, San Jose, Phoenix, Toronto, Dublin, London, Antwerp, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm, Perrysburg, Columbus, Liberty, Dallas, Baltimore, Winnipeg, San Diego. And the, we had a question that I yeah, felt like... Yeah, actually, and also, I'm going to be in Edmonton. Tickets aren't on sale yet, but November 30th to December 3rd. November 30th, House of Comedy also, right? Yeah, Danny Edmonton. Yep. Chuck. Yes, sir. And... Also, so, okay, you know how there's all those places on the side of the road that have fireworks? Yeah. Okay, so JJ was positing, he goes, 
it's all like a tax scam. So they basically, he goes, because they only open one day a year. And you go, okay, how could you be a business that's open one day a year? Or some of them do like we're open one day every two months and whatever. And he goes, no, basically what happens is they buy the land and then they put a business there so then they can write off everything with the land. And he goes, it's a tax scam, except for there's like a- This co- is literally Cosmo Kramer where he goes, write off. And you go, against what? <laughs> He goes, you know, write-offs. It's Jerry's write-offs. And you go, against what, though? Well, what about this? You write all your farm equipment off. You write everything for your oh, whole farm your, off. Oh, you have like a real... Um, yeah, so you have your... I guess your farm would be a business, too. But like, he's sa- he's essentially saying, you have this big piece of land, that, and then you, have, you put a little business there that loses money, so then you can write everything off against that. Potentially, I don't know. I mean, and then you know, there's a couple of scam. There's well, a couple of people Spirit, that thought scam. Well, Spirit Halloween is, you know, their whole business is they're open for a month. So, a year, yeah, but they, they all they only like lease it out for a couple months. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess that's true. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's possible. I, I don't know. Much well, about everyone the, says Spirit Halloween. They always say, oh, they're going out of business. But what really happens is they just lease the place. Yeah, they out. Lease, yeah, they, lease they find empty buildings and lease them out for so like a couple like, months. Yeah, so they go. It's turning into a Spirit Halloween, but technically, so for, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know about that one. Maybe JJ's onto something. I don't. So I'm sure someone who's listening knows for sure what the answer is. Comment down below. There's definitely the people scam. who who uh, how could you stay in business show selling fireworks the, once a year? Under, well, there's a few. There's July Fourth three times a year. Yeah, not a lot though. There's not a lot. I don't and know. then and it's also cheaper to buy them in bulk. That's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um. Know. So this Victoria's Secret show, we uh, the the kind of conclusion that I'm drawing, which we've sort of said, is that most of this stuff has sort of been, you know, kind of getting rolled back where the truth is a lot of these companies have shareholders. Someone, adults are getting back in charge. They'd be like, okay, the woman's fired. We're yeah. not doing any of this stuff anymore. We tried it. They honestly could be like, look, we gay, we tried your way of almost ruining the brand and the <laughs> yeah. company. Let's, did you see the fashion shows they were way. doing? Yeah, I think we talked about it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did talk about it, but it's like, they were one step away from a girl with no arms and legs getting rolled down the <laughs> runway. <laughs> It's crazy. And they have back to back and then there's a girl with one leg and she's like fat and she's got one leg and she's like hobbling down the thing and she can barely there's like a girl with no head. It's like real it's out of control, Is that dude. Ichabod crane? <laughs> dude, the girl's like crawling along the fucking floor. Is it, it it's a fucking I mean, zombie movie. It's some a of these real fashion shows. Super niche market. Well you saw it's jokes that people have made. There's a girl on a mobility scooter and it's just like Come on. Yeah. I can't imagine she's buying a lot of lingerie. And if she is, she's probably got to buy like three pieces and tie it together to make a (laughs) scarf. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I don't. uh, That's nothing more than a a promotional thing. Surely they're not like, oh, our disabled like line is doing gangbusters. There just can't be enough people. I guess there's lots of disabled people, but are like, that is so niche. No, they're trying to get press stories. They're the whole. I mean, model, it's working. We're talking about it. So, well, yeah, but press stories. Don't, I mean, this is what I've been saying forever because I've done branded content and I've, you know, when I used to do a lot of film, I've taken a job and doing a couple of things. It was like that's the scam. Yeah, is you basically show the person, you go look how successful this campaign was. Look at all these clicks we got. <laughs> I mean, don't look at the comments, <laughs> but like, yeah, don't check out what they're actually. We have, a, you know, we got two million it. impressions. We crushed it with this campaign, and you go, well, how many of those people bought it? It's like not a single one. Zero. There's only two things that happen. Half the people comment, like, this is ridiculous. Mm. Half the people comment, I'm so glad they're doing it. And then uh, some of the people comment, the girls aren't fat and gross enough. <laughs> I wonder how much of this is Lex, uh, Les Wexner or whatever the dude who goes all tied up with Epstein. And then he had to step away. But I don't know if he's, like, involved. Like, maybe he's like, hey, let's just, like, do whatever stuff. Cause, like, just get the spotlight off of me. Like, whatever we got to do. Whatever we got to do. Whatever we got to do. Every single diversity, whatever. <laughs> just... <laughs> fucking make people stop asking questions about what i was up to that is sort of a speculation with a lot of people is it's a, it's a bit of a magic it's a, it's a bit of a look over here magic trick you know what i mean yeah i mean that is what some people do do yeah when they're just like hey do we found out that your company is implying like a crazy amount of slave labor you have like actual infants like actual infants like mining your cocoa <laughs> beans and they're just like well, you think that's crazy? We just hired a 7,000 pound model. <laughs> yeah. This girl weighs 400 stone. Look, and they're like, do you want to talk about the real issues or do you want to talk about these slave kids? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you keep going on about cocoa beans. We have a mobility scooter fashion show happening over here. <laughs>
I mean, we might be getting played. Well, so the 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 article said the honeymoon is over. Thirty percent, thirty three percent of DEI professionals lost their job last year. So the Oof. the jig of sort of uh, telling people how to ruin their business is up. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the I j- mean, they never helped. They just there was a vacuum created. They stepped in. They go, hey, George Floyd died. You're going to want a diversity person. They, they were go, the protection racket. They were basically said yeah. it would be a shame if any of these people, you know. Had to write a bad article about you. You go, oh my god, how can I not get bad articles about you? You go, oh, it's gonna cost you. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we've talked about how they, they, exactly. It's oh, like, it's gonna cost. Yeah, it's you. like the Sopranos with like the construction company. They're all just like the DEI person's just sitting out front with the little like sun thing, getting the tan <laughs> on a lawn chair, smoking a cigar, and be like, everybody here is not racist. Don't worry about it. And they're just back to their sunning. <laughs> the no show job. I remember Kurt said when we were talking about. Um, uh, like the the people that worked in television that did this stuff because I've had to deal with tons of those people, obviously. But the one, the one um, he said every t- every TV network has a army of professional cowards to tell you what you can and can't put on TV. Yeah. I mean, I understand. Like, I guess there's like you could get sued, but the, like there was all because they don't. I think it always used to be like, oh, we can't say that. Like the the whatever FTC will like sue us. No, well, yeah, whatever. But now it's like, yeah, they're like, we're well, they're trying worried, to get uh, back involved. I don't know if you've seen but the YouTube and the government and the Biden administration has been trying to reach out to, to trying to be it's clamp the hammer down telling these companies like for realsies this time oh, yeah, you gotta yeah. censor people you know what I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> we mean business yeah, 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 yo yeah. we mean business right now yeah yeah that was all fun games before but yeah we, we didn't like the you you know when people were saying the bad the wrong thing about you know gender and race but we mean business right now when we talking about now now you're fucking with the military industrial <laughs> complex now you now you done messed up pal yes sir yeah yes sir yes sir yes sir you know what okay I I don't like to be totally the guy that, um, you know, watches movies and is just like, it's too progressive. I hate it. Yeah. Like, I try to just. Did you watch gay porn this weekend? To be honest, I just don't watch movies that I suspect. <laughs> I go, this diversity's getting out of control. <laughs> They're putting gay actors this in all everything. This gay orgy is out of control. <laughs> Not a straight person in this thing. <laughs> Where are all the white guys? How, do you know how there's a lot of guys on, that have like channels talking about movies, and that's like a big part of uh, a part of it is that the, all the movies are suck because they're progressive. Yeah, that's so funny. The, the guy that just does that for a gay porn <laughs> channel, <laughs> he was just like, "I'm watching this thing. There's not a straight white man in sight." <laughs> I'm hard as a rock, and I can't come until I see a straight white guy. <laughs> That's so up. funny. <laughs> you go, I think you might have been on the wrong site. And you go, well, it's hard to avoid. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's filth is everywhere. It's goddamn smut. <laughs> well, I try to just stay away from that sort of stuff, because I don't like to... I don't love to watch movies and get fucking mad about that yeah, shit. Yeah, I agree. But I'm... You know, so if you watch a show and there's like the the branding is the girl pro, the girl protagonist that saves the world, I'll probably just stay away from that. Or at the very least, you kind of know, yeah, this is going to be that. I mean, the only thing is, yeah, I kind of, yeah, my expectations are very low when I watch a movie like that. And when they actually manage to thread that needle, you go like, that was actually impressive. Yeah, sometimes they do an like okay where you job didn't, of like, getting their like thing where in. it didn't seem like you were propaganda. Like forcing it, and yeah, it didn't seem like propaganda. Exactly, that's when yeah. that's what you don't like when it seems like propaganda. But the reason I'm bringing this up is I watched Candyman, which in my opinion the most scary movie ever made i think the two from the 90s well in my generation when i was growing up the two movies that probably spooked me the most as a eight-year-old or however old i was was Candyman and then texas chainsaw massacre Mm. remember having real nightmares about fucking wheelchair guy coming through the window yeah he used to to tell you wheelchair guy was scary dude mine was uh dark man i don't know if i'm dark man (laughs) you did danny just had uh europa the last battle no you're the scary movie you just watch any like you're like i watched martin and you're you're like you're, <laughs> they're gonna break into your house and steal your things, and you're just like that. That wasn't supposed to be what that was about, Danny. Jesus Christ, man! Nobody's safe in these neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your nightmare was just like what was the the Dr. Dre movie the one that those guys made uh, or Ice Cube sorry uh, like the NWA movie no the Ice Cube one oh, Friday Friday yeah. one of those <laughs> you just go they're everywhere <laughs> go Daniel <laughs> Jesus Christ Daniel but the the thing about that one that because I've always said the number one way okay if you're if 
sometimes it's stressful to watch scary movies. The same reason, probably the two most stressful is when some watching someone that's about to die or getting tortured. Or the second most stressful is when you're watching um, someone that has a secret and the audience knows and the person knows and the, the other right. person in the thing. And, and then know. they have the music like that. All that stuff. So it's like sometimes you're just not in the mood to be like stressed out. Mm -hmm. And I've always said the number one way to not be stressed out if you're watching a horror movie is you just have to like almost see it from that guy's side. <laughs> you <have> to, <laughs> you're all with the bad guy. It's true. Because think about it when you're watching like a mob movie, right? Mm -hmm. And you're kind of stressed out that the mobster is going to be, um, you know, get arrested. Well, then you just have to switch it and you go, well, I, I, I'm, in, I'm watching from the cop's point of view right now and now I'm not stressed out. Right, you're like... This so you're only stressed out if you're watching through the point of view from the person that the bad thing's about to happen to. Like, you're basically just following along the story as it's like they're in Well, yeah, because think about it. It's like if you watch a movie where the cop's protagonist, you're stressed out when the cop's not getting the case. When you're watching the movie The Mobs of the Protagonist, you're stressed out so when he's about to get arrested. Root for the bad guy. Well, kind of, that's a way yeah. to... De if, you, if you're not in the mood for thinking about stuff, you just root for the other guy. So in Candyman, the story story originally was he gets his um uh he was like married a white girl or whatever and then the king didn't like him or something like that and they cut his hand off and tortured him with bees or whatever and it was kind of a bad story right okay but then what usually happens every st freddy krueger jason all of these horror movies they all essentially have like a horrible thing that happened to them that turned them into a monster right yeah and there's a little bit of you kind of empathize with their like t what turned them into a monster but you yeah, also they weren't always evil but they are evil now yes whereas in Candyman, because they were like so 2023 about it they were like the story was you know this thing that happened to him because he's black and then it was kind of like you know and it keeps happening and they almost they kept bringing that up and to the point where they almost turned him into Dexter, oh. <laughs> where essentially, and then he was like, all the kids he killed were sort of like evil, you know, like almost like they were like a little racist, like kind yeah, of yeah, almost it was like, like rats, but like a race element of it. Yeah, yeah. And then the main guy who's turning into Candyman, basically, then the, him and his girl who are black, the cops come in and they're evil cops. Yeah. And then they shoot the guy for no reason, and then they kill. All the Is this cops. basically like if George Floyd was like a hero? It's, it almost... Brought back from the dead kind of thing? It, I'll, I'm not even telling them how to tell their story. I'm just saying they made you empathize with Candyman to the point where he was no longer scary. Because oh. you're kind of like... Good, he should watch it and hook those people to death. <laughs> <laughs> so why would they make him a white guy then? <laughs> if you want to make him more evil? Yeah, but well, isn't that the original Candyman I think though? you're proving my point. I think that that's kind of what I'm saying is that they were struggling to... Because really, you have to make the things you go, they were good, now they're evil, and they're pure evil. But I think they were struggling with this idea that this black guy is just pure evil. Sure. So they have to kind of not make him that evil. But in not making him evil, you make him much less scary. Yeah. And I'm sure the movie did good because... Candyman's a big franchise, but first one, scariest thing I've ever seen. Second one, you're just like, I hope those kids get it harder. <laughs> for, yeah. And then at the end, he, he doesn't even... He, the thing is, he's not this like crazy psychopath because he kills all the bad cops and he leaves the girl and he goes, tell everyone. And you're like, so he's kind of like a hero then. Yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't. That's why I. Kind of, I didn't even know there was a new Candyman. So that's why. No one did. And maybe that's why. Because <laughs> it wasn't scary. <laughs> yeah, it's like if it's a scary movie, it's not scary. Then like, I was ready. I there? was ready to be scared too. I had my black. <laughs> I had my blankets all fucking tucked in. I go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was ready to be scared. I I took a shit just in case, so I didn't have to fucking shit myself. <laughs> got the fucking diaper on. Make sure <laughs> I, got, I got my diaper on just in case. <laughs> Gonna take a quick second here to tell the fellas about Next Evo Naturals. This is something I've been using to get a better sleep at night. You don't want to wake up, you know, you slept four hours, you're not looking good, you're looking like Kramer and Jerry, you are stressed. Oh, you're stressed. Oh, I haven't taken my Next Evo Naturals. <laughs> this is problematic here. Okay. And that's why regular CBD oil doesn't just mix with your water-based body. Next Evo Naturals products are clinically proven to help your body absorb CBD four times better than regular CBD oil. So you might be out here buying some... CBD, not knowing what you're getting. Nope. It's not tested. At Next Evo, they're doing the real deal tests. They absorb better, contain 100% of the CBD listed on the label, clinically tested. They're delicious, no hempy aftertaste, and they've got sleep support complex, combines premium CBD with melatonin so you can wake up feeling refreshed to keep your schedule on track. Next Evo Stress CBD Complex, which combines premium CBD and ashwagandha to soothe away stress and stay calm to get back into your routines. So give it a try. 
And if you want to get more Z's and more Zen in your life, upgrade to better natural solutions from Next Evo Naturals. Go to nextevo.com. Use the promo code BOYSCAST to get a big 25% off. That is 25% off when you go to nextevo.com and the promo code is BOYSCAST. All right, and we got a little something different for you right now with the NBA season kicking off from the New York Times bestselling author Shea Serrano and Emmy winner Jason Concepcion. They're back together again, this time aiming their high-powered microscope at the NBA. In their new weekly podcast, Six Trophies, Jason and Shea cover the biggest storylines in the league by handing out six pop culture-themed trophies for six basketball-related activities. Things like... The Ryan Gosling in Drive trophy, which is given out to a player or a team that did something incredibly cool that week. Or the Lauren Hill, you might win some, but you just lost one trophy, which is given out to a player or a team that tried something, but it didn't work out that great for them. Or the Walter White Tread Lightly Trophy, which is given out to a player or team approaching dicey territory. Kick back as Jason and Shay recap the top happenings from around the NBA through their lens of movies, music, and more. Follow Six Trophies on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to Six Trophies early and ad-free right now on Wondery Plus. Go check it out. Debunking myths. We got a really good one here. This is this is quintessential vintage run of the mill boys cast, and it's kind of in alignment with what we've been talking about a little bit. Debunking myths: Women were pre Sorry, I'm gonna get this right. Okay. Debunking myths: Women were prehistoric hunters, not just gatherers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, just one second, please. <laughs> Let me just get the cap of the week. <laughs> what is this girl cap? Oh, you're <laughs> fuck. I didn't get that. Cool guy Danny with his slang. <laughs> Cap of the week. <laughs> Can we edit that out? Let's that would have been way funnier if you did it with the the. I think this would have got me more. Oh. <laughs> if you took the cap off the water. Cap of the the yarmulke is the cap of the week. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that right there is what we call the cap <laughs> of the week. There is not a truth in here to be sight. <laughs> women are women were every soldier in World War Two as well. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, just so you know, gladiators were also women. But you know what a lot of them There is? are lots of uh, male gatherers. <laughs> the gay ones. Women are also gay men. <laughs> There's nothing I mean, to get. Yeah. <laughs> that is sort of what's happening. That, I think that's what it is because you know how it's been like, women like Rome too. Uh, women love crypto. Like we just, you just don't <laughs> let us do it. Women, actually, it was the men that gathered and the women were hunting. <laughs> and then the, the, final, the final boss of that was... Yeah. Well, women also have penises. <laughs> you go, okay. So actually, Ladies, was, you could do anything except be the president. <laughs> it was sort of the logical conclusion. I bet you if they look back in history, they go, actually, men, women were presidents lots of times. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go, that's uh, factually incorrect. The There's band, the presidents of the United States of America, were actually three chicks. <laughs> <laughs> if you look back into it. Right. You, you know go. what it is? It's like a fucking guy picked a berry one time. <laughs> They're talking about literally like these chicks are like, yeah, two million years ago that there is evidence. You go, no, there's not. (laughs) There's no evidence that women or men were doing anything two million years ago. I think you're just kind of making an educated guess. I'll tell you their theory. Okay. If I give you a fucking spear and I go, go kill that thing. Who do you want to give it to? A roll this Chapman or some chick? Some chick. Okay. But for me, maybe you fucking want to go to. All right. Well, I stand corrected. No, but this is their theory, which is crappy. Yeah. They're basically sort of saying what you're saying. Like, all they're going, they're basically saying we have evidence of hieroglyphics of this and that. And they yeah. go, but they're saying the biased scientists saw these stick men and assumed the hunters were guys right. and assumed the berry pickers were girls mm-hmm. when there's no evidence for that. Yeah. That's I will a, say, there's they go, no, 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 no. <laughs> The only way that chicks were hunters, maybe they were killing animals by poisoning them, because that's what chicks do, but then you can't even eat the food. You can't eat the food. Because it's full of poison. I I think that they were gatherers. They just maybe weren't gathering berries. They were gathering up all the gossip in the village. (laughs) All the hot goss. They're they're gathering up all the secrets from the neighboring villages. (laughs) Well, this is just just complete bonkers. And I think that 
this stuff has to be like people girls getting grants for this sort of shit has to be like sort of a little bit yeah it's so funny too because like you can go there still are those like amazon tribes that essentially have no contact you know and they'll fly a drone you go there there. just go check what's going on right now (laughs) how many chicks are fucking hunting Like just find me, go. Well, the thing is, it's maybe like, there are, and then prove us wrong. Well, this is like, the thing. You I'm not use that. I'm not saying it never happens, right? Yeah. It's sort of like okay, if you if you take any millions of people, right, you're gonna have you know different people doing different things, right? For sure. So you know, in the native thing, they always say the two spirit, and that's the big thing in Canada. They go two spirit, yeah. and they basically go, well, the natives were the first transgenders, and it's probably a bit more of an Iran thing where a guy was gay, and they go, nah, you're a chick because you have the, of course, you have yeah. the basically what they're saying is you have the spirit of a woman, yeah. because you're gay. Sure. That's and then the, and then you go back and they go, tons of them trans people. And if you ask probably most like dudes that are native that aren't like into this stuff, they're just like, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, like we're, we, I'm telling you, so it's are not you guys like, really all gay. Hey, it's not a big no. part of our culture. Yes, you're, you guys are trying to. I think the first introduction of Two Spirit, I could be wrong, but it was like not that long ago. Even just like introduced. I think probably the no, too. Yeah, nomenclature was not. But so long. I think what happens is you go. You, yes, you could probably find some chicks. You know, there's probably villages that had you know too many of the guys died in some battle, so you have mostly women. So you go, well, we're gonna have to take a couple chicks on the hunt. You yeah. know, is it possible that some girls hunted and then a guy picked berries every now and then? It was like yes, but on aggregate, sure, it's probably yeah, the guys yeah, hunting. More. But also, you have no proof for this. Like their their proof is like I don't know. There's no way they have conclusive evidence. So they go, oh, see this spearhead that I found? That's a woman's spearhead. Exactly. Like no way. There's zero chance. So, dude, if you went cap of the week, if you went, uh, if it, like in our culture right now, we're kind of saying this about the Roman thing, but even more so, if you if you were a historian that was like a super feminist historian, thousand years from now, looking back on ours, finding the emblems, you're like, it appears according to all the garments that we found that women run the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just all the different things you go. You'd see the thing. Oh, I've found we, women are just as strong as men. I've seen many articles at the time proving that women believe that men even at the time believed that they were just as strong as men, and uh, so they go. The team also looked at the female uh, physiology and found that women were not only physically capable of being hunters, but there's also li- little evidence to support that they were not hunting. <laughs> So they're very capable. It's the absence of proof. That (laughs) that is the proof, essentially. They go, there's no proof for our claim, but there's no not proof. Do you know who every girl is? (laughs) Stuart Smiley. (laughs) You're good enough. You're strong enough. And gosh darn it. People like you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> every girl that writes this fucking junk is Stuart. Again, Smiley. like, uh, and like these chicks probably have some sort of grant at a university in like feminist studies, and this is the stuff they are forced to crank out. Like, they, well, she's been working probably on this for like to, six years, but they're probably yeah, and you got to keep that fucking money printer going, and they probably have to find these like weird angles that nobody's done yet. I know, and then someone goes, "Oh, that's interesting research. Let's have you continue." Yeah, you look back and you go, "What if King George sucked a dick?" Yeah, and they go, <laughs> Maybe that's "I like that. that. Let's go <laughs> spend uh, four years locked in like some reference library researching if King George <laughs> sucked a dick because that might yeah. be possibly Kim. Maybe King George. Like, okay, let's even say we'll go. Okay, yes." Women, there were women hunters, mm-hmm. and well, they're saying the, the what is that? Okay, <laughs> I'll even save you all the effort. Sure. Well, they go. So you're wrong about everything. <laughs> okay. So everything that you've based your foundation Thanks, on anthropologist. Is, is wrong. That's kind of yeah. I guess many even found that women were better at sports. Yeah, yeah. because they see all the things. This like the WNBA. They see all but the that's articles. That's what I'm saying. Do they do the okay? We have to do a redraft of the NBA immediately. <laughs> We've been doing it all wrong this whole time. Like we've been looking this whole thing backwards. That's what I'm saying. Even if we you're looking it, at a girl and a guy, and you go, I've been fucking looking this whole thing backwards. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> tracked the guys this whole time. What the hell? A number of papers that had come out used this default null hypothesis that caveman had a strong gender division of labor males hunt females gathered and we were like why is that the default we have so much evidence that that's not the case what's the what was the evidence and you go well, here's the other part they go well why is that the default she's like why is it the default that men did the more physical tasks and you go because they're bigger that's why yeah, it'd be the, the default. one where they could like throw something further and faster with better accuracy they're very progressive, these cavemen. 
<laughs> that's sort of what they're getting at. Yeah, that could be a new reboot of a show. Remember they they, the they, they tried to do the caveman show from the Geico caveman. Okay, had like one season they could do a progress, but it didn't do very well because it wasn't progressive enough. And the Flintstones, yeah, it's sort of uh, it's the new Flintstones, but Fred's just got his feet up, and then the girls are all <laughs> running their feet because they have better. Yeah. Well, this, Bar- Barney's trans. Well, they found that men have an advantage over women in certain activities that require speed and powers, like sprinting and throwing, but women have an advantage over men in activities requiring endurance, such as running. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking what about? What planet are you living on? How <laughs> do you have a fucking university like education? What are you talking about? <laughs> Like name, like what? I, I'm, what I'm honestly, I'm about? actually trying to be like, I know, I couldn't I'm trying to be out. like generous right now and think like, what am I missing? Where women have endurance, like nag offs. Your <laughs> sketch, yeah, women can out nag you. Wait, what? You, you hit the nail on the head. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to even give them the benefit of the doubt. Men may be stronger, but women are better endurance runners. They don't know are what? they? <laughs> like they is say, there a single endurance sport in the world <laughs> where women have a or or they go well, Usain Bolt. or are they like well you know if women had men's bodies then they would and you go well then they're men I don't <laughs> I don't I don't even know what you're saying I have no clue what they're getting at here what school is this it's probably a good one too uh, it's definitely a good school <laughs> I don't know I actually didn't write down right, what school right. it was. Not important. So it turns out estrogen is really necessary for a good hunt. That's another <laughs> for thing. For a good hunt, yeah. That was their last thing. They said estrogen's really good for hunting. And testosterone's great for gathering. <laughs> testosterone's a big gathering. Oh, you yeah. fucking... Ja- Dude, and- you get those tea shots? <laughs> you fucking... I just, just want to fucking organize the shit out of my garage. <laughs> That's what happens. You give yourself the tea shot in the morning. You're like, give the fucking... Get me out of the bushes, dude. <laughs> Where's all the laundry all over the floor? Let's take this fucking shit. Oh! <laughs> You got fucking roid rage. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna fucking put these groceries the fuck away. <laughs> I gather, we gather some berries on a real, on a real just, well, those are my berries, those are my berries. Yeah, you're just like, literally, you pick the whole plant out of the ground, you go, fuck this shit. And you pick the whole thing. Like, you're not even picking individual things. Just, ugh, you pick up a whole tree, just some bananas. Just, Ripping it by the roots. Yeah. That's how dudes gather. You know what I was thinking of? Because uh, I was <laughs> just on the topic of some athletes were so good they grew penises. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the Neil deGrasse Tyson again a little bit because I was just, I'm, I, I'm sort of a little bit enamored by some of how these like really, really respected psychologists are so stupid. And his, his I know we talked about this a little bit, but I, saw, I had uh, lunch with Francis from Trigonometry and it came oh, okay. up again because they had, it was their clip, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. why I was thinking about it again. And, um, Basically, his whole deal was he was saying, yes, right now we have gendered categories, but that's because we haven't come up with a better option. Uh That was his whole thing, right? And he was like, we're not being creative enough as humans to come up with a better option. And it's like, obviously, obviously it's coping a cop out. But the real answer is, as a smart person, you go, well, no, as a anyone with like a pretty like anyone that's smart can run every possible like you could run every possible combination of, okay, so you go, we have men and women. Like, okay, so you could do, so go UFC. It's like, you could do it by height. You could do it by age. You could do it by age. Like, you could do it by size. You could do it by testosterone levels. You go, so you're like, we haven't been creative enough to come up with them. You go, yeah, but there's not infinite possibilities. There's a finite amount of combinations of classifications that you could run people in. Yeah. And you could, in pro- it would take a really smart person maybe two and a half minutes to compute <laughs> every possibility and then look through them and be like, those ones would work, those ones would work. And the only thing you always just end back with the trans the trans women would play in the men the women and the trans women would not play in the men's and you go okay so you go we're not creative enough but it's like you don't have to be creative when there's only a limited amount yeah, of it's options not creativity there's still just like xx and xy chromosomes like it's not you can like look i get neil degrasse tyson but they all like, end up the same way though that my point to you is yeah, sorry to interrupt, yeah yeah no, no no he goes when if he was saying he was like well there's a lot of other options okay so you go okay we'll do it by weight okay so it ends the same way there'll be no girls in the guy categories and you might have guys in the girl categories every single thing will end with the same problem there is no other solution that we haven't thought of yet because there's a finite amount of options for classifications of humans. Yes, he's lying to himself to make I him know. feel better. I fucking am or to really get upset that I wasted my cap of the week on the previous <laughs> section, Ryan. <laughs> well, at least you can do it right this time in the better cap. Because obviously we're talking about girls and you pull the pink cap on. I think you're talking about 
You know, I think you're, all the fucking all the real. When you said God of the week, I thought you're talking about something to do with women because it's pink and that's what we were talking about. That's just the closest hat. Okay. Well, that, okay. So <laughs> we have. I, I haven't done my cap of the week. <laughs> it's no, but he's like, he, look, he's a. Super, I don't know if I'm doing it yet. Either. He's a fucking crazy liberal guy, and he wants to be on the quote unquote right side of all these things. And sometimes you gotta like, look, these people. You have to lie to yourself sometimes about this stuff in order to reconcile all these things. I, it's just I, I don't know any other explanation because there's no way that this dude who's like supposed to be uh, what, what is he exactly like? He's an astronomer, or astrologer, whatever. astrologer. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? It sounds like he probably is more like an now astrologer. He is, yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> He's, he's upgraded, but you're just like, yeah, he has to lie to himself because he needs to take these kind of like. I know what you're saying. Maybe I'm getting fished in, but I'm just saying even his lie is cap. Yeah, he's a double cap. <laughs> This guy's a fucking double decker. It's ridiculous. <laughs> even his lie doesn't even make sense. I mean, the ridiculous part is he's trying to be like, I'm the rational science guy. That's where I think he, like, you're really because it's fine if you're just like someone who goes, I'm, you know, an activist, I'm an, a, a activist or opinions guy. But he's supposed to be like science of science and like, and then you're like, you're saying things that are obs- observably false. I know. Yeah. So I have a good point here. So this clip went viral a couple of times. John Cena on Stern back in the day. <laughs> you the chicks just because you feel absolutely bad. you do absolutely. So Why? you give a mercy. You're a good looking guy. You throw no. a mercy but uh, at. but the, every like is is would, cool. would you ever ever do a fat chick? Absolutely. I believe it or not, uh, there was an instance not too long ago where I hit the 280 mark. Let's go. <laughs> you you bang the ch- Wait a second. Yeah. Let me get this. International wrestling superstar yeah, John absolutely. Cena <laughs> took home a 200. Do you think that? Uh, when um, he's having sex there, she goes on top of him and then he goes, you can't see me. <laughs> I'm, uh, you can't, I don't you literally can't see me. Yeah. I honestly, I'm like, you think this is true? Yeah. yeah, yeah I've heard so? him. I remember this at the time. That's why it was almost nostalgic <laughs> for me. Dude, I remember so. John Cena would go on a media tour kind of talking about how he was like, I fuck anything. Really? Dude, I remember this at the time. Okay. But by the way, I, I get that because like wrestlers, I know like a, um, any, I guess he's any saying dude, it was like as a joke kind of. Any got, dude that's a group of guys yeah, yeah, yeah. is like, yeah. So he's bang, he banged this like three hundred pounder. It's like I don't know. I've probably banged like I guess up yeah, there yeah, myself. Yeah, who hasn't? I banged your mom too, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think three hundred yeah. pounds. Well, I mean it was three hundred pound chicks <laughs> same night, but it still counts. Same time, <laughs> uh, same time, same night. Um, yeah, I, I guess for All sure. Right, he's not could, done. Yeah, eighty pounds. She shit. took me home. I didn't and take you, her. Home. Were you she attracted did. to her? Absolutely, and the experience was great. Did she have a nice face. Uh, she had a nice <laughs> smile. <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't understand. Well, Why did you do that? At first, it was kind of a, a challenge set out to me by the entire roster. Stern is the rule. It was, it was a thing where you won't do it. Okay, I'll do it. But it wasn't like she approached okay, you and said, I'll "Listen, do it. would you come back with me?" Would you there was a, there was just like a moment. I, I'm I'm pretty polite. And re- okay, yeah. so it goes on. But he got egged on by the boys, right? But he's also. Very respectful, <laughs> yeah, like he said. Oh, for sure. Okay, the comments to this, 100%, and the reason it's like, was going, you know, viral in all these places is people being like, this is how misogynist men are, these fucking pigs. Like, whoa, it's like, it's a, it's a, Wait, like, people are calling him the pig? They're, they're calling them both pigs, but yes, they're calling mm. him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck, I mean, I'm the cap of the week. Dunce <laughs> <laughs> so they're saying their point is sort of that the way that he's talking about women like oh it's uh like a trophy n- or almost the opposite that. of a trophy <laughs> 12 point buck trophy factory <laughs> 12 trophy buck. rhino <laughs> well they're kind of like oh so what's how is that weird that you had sex with a bigger girl like she's not you know what i mean yeah and it, the whole thing and it kind of i thought that do you, you understand what I'm sort yeah, of saying, yeah, for right? Sure, like, for the sure, reason yeah. people are mad is the way that they're talking about, like, why wh- Why is that... W- yeah, why would it be uh, weird for John Cena to have sex with a woman who's 280 pounds? Like, why, why is that even why notable? Why is that even notable? Yeah, 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 yeah so that's yeah, kind yeah. of what their point is. <laughs> <laughs> why is that anything? <laughs> and, why is, and why is that even a conversation? Sure. Sure. It's, so, it's like, it's so crazy for, you know, biggest Damn, wrestler in the world Damn, you didn't have a good face, though, huh? <laughs> It, it, this is the best way to describe it is like I think a lot of people really need to decide whether they want special treatment or equal treatment uh-huh. because you go you go okay so you're saying that a, a super celebrity dude one of the you know big most famous guys in the world he wants he's gonna have sex with a 300 pound girl and that's kind of like obviously kind of weird and he's even being nice about it or whatever yeah. and you go 
okay, so, and they're like, why would men talk about girls? He goes, okay, well, what's the other version of that? It is legitimately nonstop on social media, some porn star that decides to, you know, it's his lucky day, yeah, she has sex with some 300-pound guy, wearing a John Cena shirt, <laughs> yeah. probably, if we're being honest. Yeah. Or that weird, like, small dwarfy dude who's like, that guy? That guy, yeah, and he's like, crying. And it's his lucky day. <laughs> yeah. So, and the truth is, the answer is you want special treatment, mm -hmm. but... You can't, it's hard to have both because the truth is that happens all the time. Some, you know, porn star or whatever. Yeah. Like Grace is this, you know, weird looking dude. Yeah. But also he has to pay her or be filmed. Exactly. Like that chick is like, yeah, I'm 280 pounds. I fuck John Cena. Pretty big. Like you think she's not, that isn't her giant trophy for the rest of her life. Right. Like for her, she's probably like, yeah. No, it was probably sick. her 400 pound husband. She's like, dude, can you believe I fucked John Cena? Dude, yeah, I probably, he, she turned around, he just went on the top ropes and then just fucking <laughs> jumped down and slid it He's in. He's got his like foam finger. And <laughs> goes, We're an AEW family now. <laughs> husband must hate that. <laughs> Fuck John Cena. That would be annoying. I just, literally, the joke I had when yeah. I was dating the girl that was with the wrestler. You do not want your girl's ex to be John Cena, man. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. John Cena's putting in performances. <laughs> so that was kind of, I was just like, uh, the, uh, the fact that there's still people nonstop on the internet all day being like, this is, um, you know, how could guys say this? And you go, what, what, imagine this was the other way around. And you're like, yeah, that's would be no, every comment would be like, Nice of her, sick dude. Sure, of course. You go, congrats, man. You're, I mean, how many people have ever you haven't been like, man, that chick's so out of your league? Like, uh -huh. just, people say that to like people's girlfriends and shit, and like you know, like or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. it's just common. I don't know. So Danny's been on the internet being called a Zionist scum, Zionist shill, <laughs> Zionist uh, shill specifically which is so funny actually because i saw today on twitter that someone posted and maybe someone posted where they're like uh i i guess they're getting like people are getting brand deals from israel to essentially like big up <laughs> israel really and i'm just like where the fuck's my money what would you get that would be crazy if you got a brand deal from fucking dude have you seen the ads on Mossad? twitter for israel yeah, it like is the pretty Israel, crazy. The Israeli government, where you're like, is literally running Twitter ads. Yeah, that is wild. <laughs> and they're just like, we're the good. It's just like kind of we're the good guys. Yeah, it's like, I mean, yeah, we're the good guys. <laughs> They're just, it's kind of like when, yeah, when, um, you know, Coke runs ads. They're not really actually looking for you to buy. They're just sort the of brand awareness. Brand awareness. Brand awareness. <laughs> Everything Israel does has the opposite effect, though. I know. They're so it's bad. literally like, thou doth protest too much. What are you running ads for? Yeah, like, that running like, I'm very much like, I'm very happy to call out when I go like, yo, nah. Do you see the one where they, the, the dude, I, I tweeted about it, but the guy was flying the flag of Israel over the Hollywood sign, and then like the fucking <laughs> chief Israel propagandist dude, like who's in charge of their media relations, like posted that. I'm like, fuck are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> No, I've said this too. And you know what? There's a lot of people that um like their relationships are getting fucked up and they're um you know like podcast people that are not seeing eye to eye and you know getting in big fights. Yeah. And it's funny when people I think that it's interesting when people say that stuff about you because like so I've known you for what now like 12 years 12 13 years yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. and it was like you're maybe the the least um not puritanical what's the word um, like militant about any of your beliefs yeah oh yeah, yeah. like it's other almost, than other my only militant belief is that i like comedy yeah exactly that's about it no there's and also me and you i feel like which is why we've never had like any huge disagreements really because if you ever see something different from me i'm like i'd be i think both of us are pretty willing to change our minds yeah for sure because i generally like agree with your worldview so it's i either think that you're wrong about something in your chain yeah yeah or but i usually don't think that it's you're not just, the code it's not the full code yeah i don't usually like, think your code's wrong i usually yeah, just yeah, think you might be like have incorrect information in sure, there sure, yeah, so yeah. when people are saying that you're like full out about this i'm kind of like he's not though i know like it's <laughs> I, I'm just like, I know it appears that way. He thinks he's being funny. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, I'm telling <laughs> you. You are being funny. I am being funny. But it is just funny. I, I just funny like how much, uh, with you specifically, and I people do misinterpret really, you sometimes. Yeah, and I mean, I will say this, like, especially with the Twitter stuff, because that's probably where I'm on the most. But like, when people start getting whipped up, like my, yeah. on Twitter, like, with that kind of stuff, my instinct is to further 
rile them up. Yeah, you have that a lot. Yeah, where yeah. I'm like, oh, you're riled up. Well, how about this? And I'll say something I like legitimately do not. And believe. you have a little bit of autism where you get like <laughs> obsessed with it. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's a way funner app. If I have to spend any time on one app, it's it's definitely the Twitter app. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I was just sort of uh, yeah. It was two, the two points. One is that everyone's like wrong. <laughs> the things you're like. Fucking some like diehard Israel guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then guys, I'm not a Zionist shill, but I could be if I get some of that sweet brand <laughs> deal. <laughs> You know what it sort of made me think? <laughs> it is funny that there's people who are literally Zionist shills though. Like there's like a check. I know. <laughs> and that <laughs> <laughs> You're a Zionist shill. You know, you know, you have a check to you from the state of Israel media department. Well, that's a, the Sean King thing that was one of the things I want to talk about. Yeah. Because Sean King basically he was going on the Israel hostages got released and he went on a thing being like worked really hard on this glad to see them in the family he's like we've never even heard <laughs> yeah, of this guy yeah, I know he goes they're big fans of mine <laughs> and he, he posted this photo and he had all he collects Barbies do you see that <laughs> no. in the photo that he posted there's he's Sean King's out of control he's crazy he's looking out the window and then someone was like he has oh, all these photo. mint condition Barbies new in the box that are all on his the like fuck you know, Sean King's so crazy because <laughs> his whole deal is he goes he he basically did the video the video I did where I said I'm just looking at dead corpses all day to get to the bottom of it. He posted a, the photo you're saying, and the caption was, you know, I I knew when this war started I was gonna have to go into battle and it wasn't gonna be easy and it was gonna take a toll on me looking at all the corpses. <laughs> and his wife's like, his wife posted the photo. And he said he needed to take a break from looking at all the corpses. So he's just sitting there in his room, like he's just got like iPads and screens, just all dead bodies, and then he's just like. I'm, Need to take a breather. Do you want to take a fucking snapshot of me staring at the window because I've seen too many corpses today? Oh yeah. So this guy's completely out of control. And then on top of that, the interesting thing about guys like that is they're they say they're doing activism, but you go posting all of the atrocities from one side and not the other is not act it, like you're not doing anything and you're definitely not doing news no it's like i mean the same thing is like there's there's pages on the internet that post just like here's you know cops that do something bad and then there's pages on the internet there's here's black guys stealing sure like there's all these pages. Yeah, yeah, you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just a guy trying to get a point across and usually it's because you're mad to some degree sure and you think that you are like the defender of the aggrieved i guess in this case yes but like they all all saw every side that goes i only post the one like all day long my entire feed is just like atrocities from one side of a conflict Really, if that's your whole deal, you, you both sides think that they're a reaction to the other side. Yeah. So it's like, it's just like, they all think like, well, I wouldn't do it if they wouldn't do it and they wouldn't do it if I didn't do it. It's like, okay, well, you guys are just part of the landscape, but you're not really doing anything. You're definitely not doing it. I mean, especially with this, where this is obviously like the most talked about I guess you're getting people that already world. agree with you riled up. Yeah, and this, yeah, yeah, for sure. You're, you're, you're kind of codifying your side, but like... um or cauterizing, sorry, but it's like, yeah, it's the, uh, you're just getting, you're getting them worked up, I guess, yeah. Well, when things like this happen, I always kind of, you know, think about a little bit. Did I tell you my comedian stock trader analogy? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay, so people always say, you know, what's the purpose of comedians or what's the purpose of comedy, right? And then mm. probably at its core, the purpose of comedy is some sort of like a defense mechanism that humans use, right? Yeah. And then when you look at cultures, people will say that cultures are funnier based on... Uh, whether they had a uh, traumatic past, right? So they, that's why they say black people and Jewish people are funny because they've had so much trauma in their past. That's what they say, right? Yeah. I don't think that really is true because there's a lot of things that... Uh, what I think is, is that whether a culture is funny or not, by and large, is to do with how how the, the interaction that culture has between trauma and and humor right so but that can come from other ways like british people have a dark sense of humor but it doesn't really have a traumatic past no and there like are unless you talk about like i guess world war ii or something but, right but that's uh, not where it came from it's, yeah you can so it's like that is one of the ways to maybe get there but i don't think that describes it because there's different you know the same way that you could say different black people have different you know interactions with humor and they have different histories right mm -hmm. So it's not always about the history. It's generally about um, what 
what the what like i think with asians they don't have a big like something really bad happened you should make jokes about it it's just kind of a, it depends which asian it depends which asian <laughs> nail yeah, on the I head i talked to cambodians right. or something it's a, you're right so that's is i think that that's the real truth is that yeah and then when you were talking about so what's the purpose of like a comedian at probably if you were like to give the best purpose and i think this okay so do you know how people say that uh stock traders people that are stock traders they always go like day traders and stuff like that you go you're kind of uh what's the word where you're just like you found a thing to like extract money um you found like an, an inefficiency uh, no that's what i'm that's what they are doing but people always say rent seeking oh, okay so everyone yeah, ever, okay. most people kind of describe that as like rent seeking behavior same with like landlords which is essentially you just like invented a way to like steal money from people right yeah so people say that about day traders they go that it's just like rent seeking behavior but the actual truth is what the actual purpose of that in the market is they decide the price yeah so the reason is if there's too many people day trading that it goes lower and then someone else trades and then what the, the all of these things come together to find the price right mm -hmm. so i think with a comedian if you say that if there's any actual purpose which there's very little other than this maybe it's you kind of make jokes about something and then someone melts me goes the other way and then it helps you find the actual they're like traders in the thought market essentially that's what my point is yes yeah. so but it's it, it's not traders about truth it's traders about um uh proportion sure. so let's say we go that guy sucks and then someone's like does a joke about how he sucks like this much and someone does it, and then everyone kind of does their joke and you sort of find probably how much the guy actually sucks yeah like everyone's like, it's, it's like uh it's almost then on a long enough scale it's literally like uh nickelback where it was yes. there too many people shorting nickelback yeah. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then nickelback was like and then someone was like yeah. and then some like warren buffett long-term investor dude was like you know what something wrong about this going on i'm gonna actually bet on nickelback and now they're up big yes yeah and if you're a good comedian you're finding the discrepancies in the market where you go everyone's saying this but it's actually this there's money to be made here in the form of laughs correct but that's what i think yeah. probably the purpose is at its core and it mm -hmm. was kind of making me uh <laughs> i'm just glad that's your theory and not mine for all the people calling <laughs> me a zionist chill <laughs> You're during this time of you're saying troubles, that, you're saying during I'm just the time. I'm glad that I didn't uh, quantify <laughs> laughter <laughs> in this manner. <laughs> and those laughs can now be converted into cash in the form of live performance. <laughs> Think of a laugh like a penny, and I'm just collecting every penny possible via my thoughts. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. It is a good theory, though. That's just a, that's a sound theory. <laughs> you, you do have to be a little more careful with those bad boys, dude. I wanted, I wanted, I had an idea like a sketch about fucking someone like a Jew having to tip right now. Just how tipping as a Jew, because you know everybody's like been complaining about tipping, and then like a Jew yeah. want to be like they just like, get a thing, and it's like, oh, starts at fifty percent, huh? <laughs> that's the minimum option, huh? <laughs> oh hey, shit. Okay. And here on the boys cast, this is this is a boys cast product. I've ever heard of a boys cast oh, product. Yeah, Batscape, hairy animals. If you're a hairy animal out there, you don't want to be looking out there like fur. That's the problem. Some of the guys, the certain type of hair starts looking like they got fur on them. Yep. I actually get a bit of that stuff on the back of the arm, and I always need to freaking yeah. I take that for a spin every every two or three weeks. Tough to get that back weeks. of the arm, probably. You probably like. That's what I'm saying. So here it is. We got the Batscape. You pop it in the back. There we go, yeah. Lee. Fellas, fellas. There you go. Yeah, you're taking it for a spin. You want to get, you probably get lower back. It'd be hard for you to do because you got the bra strap in the back. So you'd have to take the, make sure you get the bra strap out first. Give it for a spin here. This is the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. So they're not messing around at oh, Backscape. Yeah. Nice. Hassle free back grooming. That's you can nice. do it solo. You do it in five minutes. And you probably don't, you know, it's not, this is an everyday thing. Well, it depends. Some of you hairy animals yeah, six have six heads to, on it. Six heads on it. And you can see it's smooth. It's got the contour. Yeah. So, Backscape, you can see this easily being a good gift, eh? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. For dad. For dad was good. For, for and it's also a, a bit of a hint, too. You know what I mean? Thing, <laughs> it's a very not subtle hint Ooh. in the gift. Nice. Backscape, five minutes. Bid farewell to the back hair with Backscape. We got a 25% off code for the boys cast listeners. That promo is going to be 25% off. The advanced and deluxe kits for our podcast listeners. This is they come in these boxes here. Backscape.com. B-A-K. 
S-C-A-P-E dot com. Promo code BOYSCAST. And if you want to, you go to backscape.com slash pages slash BOYSCAST to get there easier. 25% off. And listen, cold turkey might be great when it comes to sandwiches, but there's a better way to break through habits. Break those bad habits. And we, there's, a, there's a certain habit that, due to copy, you're not allowed to say. There's some legal issues with saying what habit you're not supposed to do. But friends of ours have used fume, including myself, yep. to get off a certain bad habit. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to say which habit. Nope. Well, let's just say. They're nice, though. For me. I like the fume. It helped me. There's a, there's a certain thing that you do. You might be taking. I don't know. You might put it between your fingers. You might inhale it. We're not going to get too yeah, specific. Well, let's not get in the weeds <laughs> about this. I don't know how in the weeds you could get. They, <laughs> they're very serious. You're not supposed to mention this specific bad habit. And we're not. And we're talking about our sponsor, Fume. And they take a look at the problem a little bit different because not every single bad Bad habits wrong, you know. So instead of a habit, for example, go a habit of going to the gym and a habit of fume is not bad for you. So instead of having uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume's an innovative award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, it's completely natural. Instead of vapor, they got flavored air. They have different cores that you put in. It's a nice wood inhaler. It's fun to play with. It tastes good. Your fidget happening, we can also replace Mm -hmm. with a better habit. And as in the New York comedy scene, Fume is uh, infiltrated, so a lot of people are using them. It comes with an adjustable airflow dial designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing, anxiety while breaking a very specific habit sure. that we will not speak the name no, of. we will not. Join Fume, accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits. Picking up the journey pack today, head to tryfume.com with the promo code BOYSCAST. Save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. T-R-Y-F-U-M.com. And the code is BOYSCAST to save an additional 10% off your order today. Uh, one thing that, uh, there's a couple of funny things that, was Pierce Morgan has probably the best, and I'm not done talking about the Sean King thing, yeah. but Pierce Morgan probably has the best um, business model right now. He legitimately just brings people on and loses debates with them. Yeah. <laughs> he brings people on. Like, he was at Hassan Piker on, who, by the way, that guy. He's the, maybe the biggest like guy that you. It's very easy to point out the inconsistencies in what he thinks. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, he's and, not very smart. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I think he's probably dumb, but I, mean, I don't know exactly how smart he is. But like, what, here's an example of the kind of things he was saying on Pierce Morgan. He goes, he was talking about. Uh, the you know saying that essentially the terrorist attack didn't happen for no reason like things lead up to that blah 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 right sure which is you know obviously uh, yes exactly and then pierce morgan was arguing that and then he kind of says analysis is not justification like you're not allowed to analyze things and you're just like okay so now how about you on everything else yeah (laughs) you go like imagine anything else where you would go hey i'm just telling you what why you know you go I mean, any number of million things. I mean, yeah. And you might go like, okay, now analyze why people might have stormed the Capitol. And you go, no, they're actually just evil. <laughs> like, or just anything. You go, why is this culture doing worse? Why is why why might be there less women in things? Why am I in this? You go, hey, I'm not justifying it just because I'm doing an analysis of what might have led us here. And he goes, no, no, no. Here's We're only allowed to do it here and nowhere yeah, else. for this specific thing. Because you go, I actually agree with you, but I also agree with you on everything. Yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 I also agree with you that that is relevant to everything sure sure yeah 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 Yeah, i agree yeah yeah. but pierce morgan he's got a pretty good business model he just like literally brings people on all day long he has four interviews a day loses debates with them yeah Yeah. the boston yusuf one was really good actually did you see yeah i thought it was crazy it was crazy it was like 35 minutes and i mean he he, that that guy did probably more for the palestinian cause than maybe anybody so far Mm -hmm. um and uh it's the and it's his biggest interview ever bigger than kanye it was like like bigger than andrew tate interesting oh yeah yeah this one's i mean there's 1.8 billion muslim people in the world it's not but uh yeah it's like uh i think it's way it's bigger than both of them like over 15 such million. an ultimate business decision million, to something. get the muslims on your side there's a lot of them man it's i know order the world it's a big business decision yep a lot of those guys a lot of the random guys on the internet where you're just like how is this guy so big? Who watches this? And then you go look at the comments and it's all like... I mean, Basim Yusuf was literally that guy. I go, who is this guy? He has like 11 million followers on Twitter. He like He's a yeah. comic. He's Palestinian, but he, or, but he lives in like LA or London or I think LA. I was like, I've never heard of this dude, but this guy probably must be one of the most famous comedians in the world probably. I know. It's never bizarre, right? Yeah. 
I mean, I, I actually liked him. I, I did come away like he, he he made some pretty like funny points and stuff. And uh, I mean, he was it was really funny because it was like he was funny about it. What did he say is the best point? I watched like a second uh, of it. Uh, what was the best point? Kind of like the exchange rate, and he was like, you know, um, like with the you know, he's like, what's what's the exchange rate for Jews to Arabs? Because he's like, you know, in this year they had this many Palestinians, or he's like, and now they're saying it's this many because because people were saying like it was you know nine nine elevens or whatever. Like people were like, oh, this is the Israel thing. Uh, uh, on October seventh, that was uh, like fifteen nine elevens. He's like, what kind of like? He's just talking about the jo- <laughs> the silliness of using like, measuring the, and the measuring and ex- the exchange rate and stuff and like yeah, like how many bo- how many kids are worth or whatever and like I don't know. He's just it was, it was the humor of it was like uh, well done for sure. You know what? Another theory that I sort of had that on that topic. Yeah, and this is my last theory that I'll hit you with today. Okay, but one of the reasons why like. The activists are sort of bad in this um, scenario is because activists a lot of times is about like evening out what they see as inequalities where they go like not in the thought one like that's what I was saying but if you go for example you go these people are making too much money you're like we need to even that out how how they have to make less money or they have to make more money right mm-hmm. it's all about evening out but when you're talking about like war and deaths and you go like if you go hey look how many of these people are dying and they always go look how many of these people are dying and you go Okay, but if you see like 10,000 people are dying, the answer isn't like, well, we need to make sure that 10,000 of those people die. Of course. The, the answer is, how do we have less deaths, period, in the future? Mm-hmm. And that type of thinking is all only, that like oppressor, oppressed thinking only is like, how do we even out the amount of deaths? Yeah, it's like, I you, mean, everyone everything... is saying that, they go, hey, uh, look at, there's a, look at, there's this many deaths on this side. And you go, okay, well, if it was the exact, if it was like 10,000 here, 10,000 there, would you be like, all right then. That's I mean the whole <laughs> social justice movement in the last like almost decade has been just revenge mostly. It's mostly just been like, hey, you fucked us over for X amount of time and we would like our revenge now by like no white guys. <laughs> I would and like stuff. my revenge. It's literally please. what it is. It's all just like you're bad, no, you're not allowed to do I this. Guess, uh, you gotta be fired from this. Like it's just it's all that's essentially what it's Well, it's just fine and I'm I'm there's always gonna be activists yeah. and that's like college and whatever, and that's just always gonna exist. And maybe there's some extent to which people need that, I guess, but I was more even saying that it doesn't it's not very useful in geopolitics fucking no. things, I don't think. I mean, I, I, I'm i becoming... you're like, how to find a solution. I'm becoming even... But like I said this, we're right when the war broke out, the first episode we did, where I go like, I, I felt like, and I believe it even more, where like at, at the start, I go like, seems like Israel's just going to have to do whatever they need to do. And if people want to fucking march protest against them in some country that has nothing to do with Israel, then like... They can protest and that's that you know like the george floyd stuff happened in the country i guess they don't have to be dropping all the bombs though uh, no i I'm, I'm just saying i'm there's not a certain, i'm not excusing there's a certain level of uh i heard someone say it was like there's a certain death count where people are like not gonna accept it obvious uh, but again so it's like i, I know I, you're saying just do whatever like, you want but there's probably consequences of that too you can't to, just like go fucking kill everyone no no, no. i am definitely not. they're not america <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm not uh like encouraging that or saying that they should i'm just saying like to um d- a reasonable degree and i think it's more like other countries will have to hold them to account in terms of like maybe the way they probably will, other countries but sanction yeah. but i'm just saying like if you want to go protest in fucking Edmonton you're like go for it that's true whatever like they they, they can't just take the temperature of every place in the world well, I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a other for, side of that though yeah because there is Jewish people all around the world sure and if you were for example a Jewish person in New York which there's tons of them yeah it's and, the Israel, largest Jewish- and Israel was just like increasingly like making the image of Jews like these guys are terrible well, the problem- that would be bad for all the people here sure but the I mean I guess the corollary that would be everybody's like well Zion like uh, just because I'm against Zionism doesn't mean I'm against Jews and so you, everybody's like when they're against Zionism they're able to separate them will they actually oh I know the thing you're, dude, <laughs> like, the thing you're just saying yeah. that was where I was like this is topsy turvy world because that like that stuff yeah. where it's like no me that it, it's just like just because I'm pointing out crime statistic doesn't mean and you go <laughs> again I sort of like agree people can have these discussions but you go yeah. It's like I'm watching the things that a lot of people we know got nuked from every channel <laughs> being printed on the fucking yeah. front page of Guardian. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. like we're in topsy turvy world. It's crazy. I thought okay. Well, I'm- this this was literally um, like this was a bug in the line of code. 
Right? You, know, you know what I thought? I thought of I have one more theory. Yeah, I know yeah, I yeah. promise you no more theories. That's fine. I like the theories. Okay, this is what it is. Uh, progressive Jews think that they're saying Black Lives Matter, but re- everyone else thinks they're saying All Lives Matter. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's, totally. That's like the that's the brain discrepancy. I mean, I, I, like in Amy I, Schumer's mind, she's this is her Black Lives Matter, yeah. and in everyone else's mind, you're doing All Lives Matter. <laughs> yeah, 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 kind of. <laughs> like literally, all I'm trying to do right now on my crazy Twitter stuff is like I'm just a uh, counter balance to like sarah silverman brett gelman and just all the nonsense that those people are doing well you also you see are the jewish too. Yeah, i like, know i know but i'm like no, those, but i just mean like you're like, like whose side are you gonna like when be, there's lots that of, part, there's lots of jews who are like yeah but you're not really commenting on you're not you're like okay maybe i'm wrong yeah this is my sy- synopsis of you yeah is you've not been commenting as much on no. the actual geopolitics as much as like people's uh, discourse. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, I don't like. Again, I'm not commenting on the geopolitics. I'm I'm more so me just like. So the, yeah, you're just like, yeah. I mean, I'm just mostly just cracking jokes and. Yeah, it's so right. sort of a different thing. Yeah, yeah. You're, no, not really, I, like, you're not really like proposing. No, what I just you think more mean the the hatred. Like like when I because like the Brett Gelman. Do you see his thing? What did he? Oh, I can imagine. What Again, he's doing. so it's like the. I, and honestly, <laughs> I cannot. I, I don't think I can like really explain how much joy it brings me to what watch someone like Brett Gelman, who is like this was telling every person that they were bad for the last ever. He was on the hunt to get people kicked off of stuff. Kicked kinda, off of yeah. stuff being like, wasn't he? He was pretty uh, bad. Pretty wear a, dude, he's like, he's like, you fucking, stuff. yeah, like wear a mask. Like, dude, just every single thing. He's just been all, he's never met a stance he didn't like. Exactly. Like biggest cheerleader. And then when the, his one thing, and then now he's like, he's short circuiting. Like, cause Why he's, is he pro Israel? Kind yeah. Of he's like, sh- like staunchly. So you're, oh, oh, I think I misinterpreted you. So you're, point that you were making was i'm showing you that like we're not all insane yes exactly <laughs> like because i'm like people are like fuck these people look at this that, like these that super I famous think you're doing yeah I agree. these super famous people are like what is wrong with their brain and you're like we're not all uh, fucking we're not, nuts. <laughs> no and he's like he's having like a breakdown <laughs> on social media because he what can't. is he saying he did some whole thing where he goes oh all the people like he did this like weird song where he's like oh all the people who are uh Pro, pro Palestine, you're on settlers' land, and like he's doing this whole thing where he's like, "Oh, don't you know?" And like they're like, "Yeah, they don't care." For one, like all the anti-colonialist people who are like, you know, they're able to have these two ideas at the same time, where like they live in a colonialist country. Yeah, you don't change their opinions with contradiction. No, you only point their. You only the only way you change their opinions is social pressure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's just like he doesn't get it. Where he goes, hey, I'm explaining to you this inconsistency that we have. <laughs> Huh? Guys? And they go, yeah, we don't give a shit, Brett Gelman. <laughs> and they're like, fuck you. Then yeah. all they do is they go, hey, this guy did a fucking play 10 years ago where he was in blackface the whole time. Later. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like the, the clip that Sarah Silverman came out where she's like uh, on uh, right. Real Time with Bill Maher or whatever, where she's like, yeah, which is so funny because like she wasn't even doing well. It, people were like, comedy was crazy back then. You're like, she was bombing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that was... Uh, that was where I go. Yeah, it was because she was on real time with Bill Maher doing these racist jokes, eating shit, and then everybody's like, "Man, comedy was crazy back then." Huh? I'm like, "Was it?" <laughs> <laughs> like I remember watching that thing. And I go, "There's nobody laughing though." Okay, but you want to talk about Bill Maher though, brother? So I guess in those camp. Because uh, on the, I guess they're on that the Tim Heidecker show, and he he his whole thing is like it's kind of crazy to because like he's made so much funny stuff. If you want to ever tune into what he's doing, it's like he's basically doing like a Bill Maher like reaction podcast. <laughs> he's a he's a stream sniper. <laughs> he's kind of like a Bill Maher stream sniper. He just plays clips of Bill Maher, but like to be honest, and because his whole thing was he had like Larry Charles on or whatever yeah, the other day. I like Larry Charles. Me too. Well, maybe I did. And I they sort know. of had Larry Charles. <laughs> they sort of had. Larry. Let, me, let me wait for you to say what you're going to say before. I'll hold off. There. Well, his his his, his he documentary th- about the comedy in like crazy countries was cool. He thinks there's not enough Jews in Hollywood. <laughs> so he they basically had Larry Charles on, and they're kind of making him like talk shit about Bill Maher, kind of. Yeah. And Bill Maher is like, yeah, I guess grumpy old man sort of thing, and. And then they're sort of like making Larry Charles talk shit about him. And he's kind of like, oh, I don't know. And they were just like, he's in his bubble and stuff like that. And it was just like, 
Yeah, and you're just the other one. Like, it's, it's so crazy because they're just like, you know, he's so grumpy old man. It was like, well, you guys are a grumpy also. Yeah. You're like, and then they're sort of, it, it's always that thing where it's hard to go be, it's hard to be like the, I don't, you can, you can never go back to being the like, I don't even give a shit guy yeah, yeah, after yeah. you've kind of like given people a bunch of lectures. Of course. Right. Uh, absolutely. But you can't I'll, be okay. like cancel the cancels. It's like same thing with the cancel squad people. You can't be the cancel squad fucking running the firing squad. And then when they come for you, be like, you know what? Maybe we're going too far with this cancellation stuff. Right. Listen, I don't want to be a Bill Maher sniper myself, <laughs> but I I watched one of his monologues. You you hit the nail on the head where you just said it's uh, the best of Twitter that week. Yeah, for sure. But okay, I'm just going to play this one part. I think I, record, I, think I might have sent this to you. I was recording on my phone because I was just like... Very supportive when Hamas terrorists went on a rape and murder rampage worthy of the Vikings. They knew where to point the fingers at the murdered, and then it was off to ethics class. <laughs> So you know what? I take, I take back what I said about Sarah Silverman. I guess that was just all the reactions on that show. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's, dude, it's every... You know what it is? It's it's basically if you're... Gra like, I get it. It is if your grandfather came in and he had some jokes. But it's like, this is on out. HBO. Like, this is not on... That show is not on, like, cable. That's fucking H... Like, on ABC or something. It's That's smattering of laughs. And like, he can claps. say whatever the fuck he wants. They claps after every joke, by the way. I'm aware. They never don't clap. So, yes, they're right. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but he is like 65. Yeah. He's, not, he's still out there banging, apparently, too. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a dirty dog. He is a dirty dog laying his, pipe. His, his whole thing was like he was the dude at the Playboy Mansion like every weekend. Really? Uh, yeah. That was just like him and the fucking Bill Maher in the grotto. Like, dude, if you search Bill Maher Playboy Mansion, it's just like a thousand. The reason I don't really like Bill, the, the thing that, well, not my really don't like him, my gripe with him. Is if you watch his things, it's he's really big on the like millennials or pussies stuff, yeah. and it's like, I, and when I, that's that stuff just drives me up the fucking wall because, um, I'll, you know what? I'll give it to you in um, Jew language, okay? Because someone actually said that it's not the worst maybe in, interaction where they go, the uh, Jewish people are sort of like higher performers in a lot of ways, so. They, some of them, someone said, words not mine. well, that's just like a fact. I don't think you can really deny that, sure. that's just, but they go, so yeah, they have more Jews running things, but, and they also have more Jews scammers because the Jews are also yeah, yeah, going to be in yeah, scam yeah, Our friend said that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah well, yeah, I'm not trying to yeah, out yeah, someone, but yeah, they basically no, said, not, yeah. but they go, yeah. So if you're going to be like a scam artist, the Jewish people also excel at being <laughs> scam artists. <laughs> true. And if so you end up with kind of, you know, so the kind of argument, I think that Dave Smith has sort of made this argument, I guess he's Jewish also, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, there's a lot of Jewish people trying to ruin the world and he goes yeah there's a lot of Jewish people trying to save it too or whatever I don't know yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm not even yeah, getting yeah. that but my point it's is the people who are counteracting but I'm taking also. that logic and applying it to millennials mm -hmm. and people our age because it's like Bill Maher kind of has this attitude of like you know uh, kids these days are pussies and it was like yeah, and you wouldn't say any of this stuff until th four years after millennials were yeah, saying you, it. Yeah, you were literally like, yeah, you were so behind on the like. Yeah, you're five years behind. Overton window shifting, and you were still like this. Li and you go, oh, that's a woman's not. Remember, dude, there's the famous Dennis Prager clip on Bill Maher where De 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 Dennis Prager was like, well, you, I can't remember exactly, but it was something along the lines of like, you know, there's men getting periods. And Bill Maher is like, De this like super smart Dennis, come on, there's no men getting periods. Periods. like and Dennis is like you'll see and he goes <laughs> okay and like they all are laughing in his face basically like <laughs> yeah. the whole out the whole panel the whole audience laughing at him and uh -huh. then and then you know he just kind of silently like four years later was like men with periods oh, that's right so that's what drives me nuts is like a guy being like well oh, these this new soft generation yeah. blah 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 and you're just like yeah, except that's the same generation that you copied them five years later. Of course. You know what and I mean? after they stopped saying it because it's kind of like a null and void point now. Yeah, it's very difficult to be that famous and st actually stay grounded in reality. The only actual person comedically who I think is really doing it is, well, is Louis. And by the way, I'm okay with you being 60 and you're like, everyone's like, he's like an old guy now. You're like, yeah, that's correct. He is he's like 60. an old guy because he is an old guy. So fine. Yeah. But I don't need to fucking to come with a slice of you telling me you're better than me. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So anyways, Sean King. <laughs> oh, wrap this bad boy. Malcolm up. X. The, the 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 thing was, I sort of trying to figure out because it was really hard to figure out what exactly did happen. And I think what happened is he basically one of the people that knew the girl and apparently was a brother did reach out to him. And this is the crazy part. So this goes back to what you were saying earlier. She goes, um, 
the brother apparently because he's like listen these guys reached out to me which is possible it was just no one but the brother reached out to him how on instagram and he checks his dms he apparently he checks his dms and what it said was he reached out to him because he knows sean king is really tied in with the palestinian government and so sean king's kind of posting this being like yeah and i help negotiate because i'm tied in with the palestinian government and then you're just like wait so just like rewind a second what so sean king's Tied in with the Palestinian government? Well, what does that mean? Is that just the assumption is like because he was a Black Lives Matter leader and they're like... Like, is he on the payroll? Like, Israel's got people on the payroll? I don't think so. I don't know if that's legal. So how is he tied in? They're just boys? (sighs) (laughs) Cap of the week. It has been awarded. (laughs) Cap of the week. I think it's Cap of the week that he's tied in with the Palestinian authorities. I don't think so, yeah. This guy reeks of Cap of the week. I don't think he ever received this He's posting things saying, well, this is the thing. It could have just been a guy on the internet messaging him. He's just talking to some random account that's like head of Palestine. And he's (laughs) just like... Well, I, what, I, how about if I give you three branded posts yeah. for two of the hostages? <laughs> He's like negotiating with just like some kid on his computer. Yeah. It's like, oh, head of Palestine. I see it has 24 <laughs> followers. How about this? I oh, give you a repost. I could probably <laughs> share. I'll give you a, I'll give you a like, a follow for follow for yeah. starters. <laughs> um, Half price off a of follow. I mean, follow. I can only imagine that his DMs are. 95 percent yo what's up sean it's me head of hamas yeah you're like so what is he sifting through all the dms which is must be mostly hate dms because he's just, <laughs> it's got so you're like hate. it's mostly hate and then i i i don't i think he just is like you know not uh but then there is okay so let me go a the fair dealer the only say. thing that i'll go the other way that sort of makes sense is he's sort of saying he was sort of somehow involved in this uh in, in this this uh exchange process which may be crazy minimal but a he was involved in the exchange of the <laughs> this is the this is what he's saying no fucking way well apparently i think what happened is the brother of the girl did reach out to him because she allegedly thought he was tied in with palestine somehow but afterwards the israel government was like hey you can't be mentioning that uh sean king helped on this this is his side of the story he's saying no <laughs> Fucking way. Take two caps. That's, there's zero. <laughs> That's what he's saying? This is, this is his theory. Oh, but there's also no way to back it up because it's He has some, no, he has a screenshot of him he, that he says is him Instagram messaging with the brother. That's the No, only, no, I want to know the, I want to know the emails any, with the Israeli <laughs> government. He doesn't have any inf- information. He doesn't have any screenshots with the Palestinian Sean King's on the, literally the phone with fucking BB. Go, BB, no, no, I uh, need sa- you to release, get a couple No, he says houses. he's on horn with the, <laughs> he says he's on the horn with the head of Hamas. Hamas. And then he says the Israel government went on the horn with the family and he was like, don't mention Sean King's name again because we don't want him in our fucking... (laughs) (laughs) What is he he building a new pool or something? He needs more money? Like, what is going on? (laughs) Apparently, this is like the 10th time he's tried to insert himself into (laughs) some big drama. Dude, this is like literal pathological liar at this point. I think he's a pathological liar, too. That's crazy. He might have, all all I'm saying is he might have messaged the brother. And it's possible that him and the brother talked. Maybe. And then he thinks maybe what he can... <laughs> I'm being very charitable right now. Maybe he po- he goes, I posted about it. We got to get these hostages there. And that's you know I'm, that's my contribution. So I was involved in the negotiation process. He's I mean, look, if loosely. he posted release these two hostages and then those two of the 200 hostages <laughs> got released... Sure, I will give that to him. The balls on Sean There's King, though. No they go, way. You know how fucking crazy it is to be like... Uh, that is... When someone posts, like, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the perfect analogy. It's kind of like, yeah, there used to be a thing in comedy where um, whenever someone was like, yeah, I'm going to the funny bone. I- I'm doing like, you know, okay, you go, oh, I'm actually doing a gig pretty crazy. I, um, I'm doing the, I'm doing the, I just got asked to headline this crazy corporate. And you go, oh, crazy. That worked out. Yeah, I mentioned you. I'm glad that worked out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, you just want a little so something. And the guy goes, really? And you go, no, I'm just fucking nah, with you. Yeah, but like, it's always funny. Someone tells you you get something and then, or like, yeah, I smashed that girl and you're like oh i actually talked to her about that i'm glad that worked out just like trying to tell tell someone that you like made the thing happen for them but like he's kind of doing that where they go you know oh we actually got this guy free and he's posting online being like glad it worked out you know we've been all together the the squad's been working really hard and everyone's like what squad like if sean king has the direct line to the head of hamas i hope 
the Department of Justice knows about this. Like, I hope he's getting like, I don't know. It seems like borderline I'll tell you criminal. What he did. Sean King helped the hostages get back the way that if you go to like a Bulls game and heckle one of the players, yeah. and then he has a bad game in the finals later that year. <laughs> yeah, you go, know, yeah, remember when I gave it? <laughs> <laughs> when I gave it to him, and then you kind of like in your mind, you're just that's like, like the equivalent of if, if there's a ceasefire next week, and then Mark Ruffalo goes, "My tweets did that." Yeah, my tweets did that. Yeah, my tweets did that. <laughs> I think know. that's probably closer to what it is. All right. Well, I mean, he's making some real claims here that <laughs> this isn't just <laughs> these posts that did this. He's like, "Yeah, me and fucking head of Hamas." like this <laughs> all right <laughs> anyways people are mad at dave Chappelle too but because dave Chappelle went to his thing and he was sort of going against israel on he's this. muslim what side do you think he's gonna be on well but more importantly have you lot not learned anything from watching dave Chappelle? he's gonna have five specials about fucking zionism also now. <laughs> also who do you think ran comedy central when they fucked him over that's the other thing too yeah yeah like, he has some personal beef yeah just put the fucking pieces together what do you there. think he's gonna be doing all of these are true, but I still think just from a, well, this is where Jew, Jewish people aren't as good tactically as they think they are sometimes. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone, yeah, anything you could have learned from all the trans stuff, it's like writing a thousand articles telling Dave Chappelle to stop doing something. There's That ends in a five specials about sure. it. Sure, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. His new special is going to be like, who really did 9-11? But now, is there a 4D chess element where the Jews go, oh yeah, we run the media? How about we let Dave Chappelle go trash us? And they put it out there and they go, do we though? But do we? But do we? You think that's the 40 Jets? 40 Jets is so great. You think Sean King's playing 40 Jets to get the rest of the hostages out? Sean King's Sean playing King. a 40 Jets game to help me get the whole thing solved. <laughs> Sean King's waking up every morning just putting on the fucking paint in his face. And then he goes, he goes, I wonder what it would look like if I was actually black. <laughs> do you think he's ever and his done his wife knocks on the door like, what are you doing there? He goes, nothing, nothing. He's, he's definitely experimented with like face creams oh, and added a little skew yeah, to the, it. The reverse Sammy Sosa. <laughs> he's going to reverse Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there's lots of, go lots going on, man. Oh, but, yeah. We got another we, we got another fucking classic for you because there's a new term alert. Ooh. New term alert, new term alert, new term alert. I'm a solo sexual. <laughs> We've done autosexual, but now this is solo sexual. Autosexual and solo sexual are different, apparently. Yeah, they seem similar. They are similar, but I think I know the difference, okay. right? Um so autosexual. Actually, I forget. I fucking thought I, I had thought it. They were, <laughs> I thought they were both that you jack off to the thought of yourself, jacking off. No, no, no. Autosexual is you're attracted to yourself. Solo sexual is you just prefer jerking off, but you're not thinking about yourself. Oh. So autosexual is you're jerking off and you're just like, fuck, this dick's I nice. Thought, oh, okay. Like, you actually like the dick. Whereas the auto se solo sexual is just a... a a guy yeah a solo sexual is just a dude that fucking spanks it <laughs> oh, okay but they but they go over the top with the gooning I've i think you gooning i think it's fair to say i'm a bit of a solo sexual myself i'm a bit of a goon a strong or exclusive preference for masturbation over any form of sex i've definitely had a few nights where i fucking got a little salt <laughs> they say a little bit of a, a don juan de marco <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> I'm a Han Solo sexual. <laughs> um, outsiders often assume solo sexuality is a symptom of social dysfunction. So they think if you're some people will say if you stay at home and jack off all day, that's maybe there's something dysfunctional about that. Sure. Sexual anxieties or rather pathology. Alternatively, many think it's just something people practice when they're single. An activity that can I say I've, I've fucking probably the more single I am, the less of a solo sexual I am. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I, I agree. You know what I mean? I've heard people say this like, "Oh yeah, spanking it a lot because I'm not in a relationship." I feel like it's opposite, the complete opposite. Al, Al Bundy syndrome. <laughs> it is Al Bundy syndrome. Yeah, definitely more spanking it when I'm fucking cuffed up. <laughs> So she goes. One hand come on me, one <laughs> hand come on the fucking D. <laughs> it's just something they practice when they're single. An activity they can turn off and on rather than a proclivity or a sexual identity. Well, it's definitely not a sexual identity. No, nobody gives a shit about your fucking identities other than like some writer's advice. Like nobody cares. Identity's a strong word for oh. a guy that jacks off a lot. <laughs> You're like, if that is your identity, keep it to yourself. Look, there's no, not all identities are positive. Do you think that one helps you get a job when they start doing the fucking box checking? 
<laughs> so can you tell us about yourself? Oh, I like to jack off for like one to two hours per day. Oh, we're looking for uh, diversity, and you go, oh my god, that's great. <laughs> I just cranked one out in the bathroom on the way here. I actually come to think of it. <laughs> but here's the... Okay, so that's the intro. Yeah. But here's where it gets good. While many in prominent groups such as Bait World, the premier online men's masturbation community... Yeah. That it is sort of a tough one. because it's basically JJ kind of. A if man. you're... <laughs> If you're a moderator in Bait World, like you gotta really keep that to yourself. You're gonna stay a moderator in your Bait World if anyone finds out about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> that's a tough. Definitely check. not picking up the phone from fucking those rats at Vice. <laughs> that's for damn sure. <laughs> Any sense about you? You de definitely don't want to pick up the phone from the rats if you're. But you do not want your chick finding out that you're a high-ranking member of Bait World. <laughs> Well, maybe I wouldn't have to do it if you put some effort in every now and then. <laughs> Bait world. <laughs> I do like the goon caves, though, that they talk about. What, I didn't hear that. What oh, was the you goon, didn't read the goon So, it's, so they, they call them in Bait world, they call them gooners and, <laughs> or whatever, and they're these dudes who they set up these like goon caves, goon dens, where they basically, it's just like a jack-off. I took your water. It's put like it a, in the middle. It's communal. A, communal uh, it's like a little jack off cave where they'll have like <laughs> like literally like some dude will have like like they'll jack off for like two hours and they'll have like two four, hours four monitors and so they're like just submersed in watching porn and they call it goon dens yeah goon dens and they'll just like they'll just sit there and like sit like just like literally in the matrix kind of just jacking off and edging <laughs> themselves and all this stuff and it's really just depraved behavior bizarre <laughs> Bizarre little world. Can't be it. good for the dopamine receptors in your brain to just be like surrounded by four different types of porn <laughs> at once and you're just like fucking not blinking and Yeah, Goon World's pushing it. Yeah, Goonins it's a lot. Well, many they're entirely male. Although Bait World's entirely male, there are also female solo sexuals. But the they don't have as much community. They don't have as much community in the. <laughs> they don't have as many chakras for the female autosexuals. But just so you know, females are autosexuals too. <laughs> just in case you fucking thought this was some sort of male activity, girls can drag up to. Of course. But those communities haven't gained much visibility or acceptance in the wider world. So the, even in, even in the masturbate, even in the I masturbate for an identity community, the girls are feeling left out. Yeah, of course. I mean, Vice cannot write an article if there's not like the. But women also. <laughs> We haven't forgot about you, ladies. <laughs> ladies also fucking jack off, and not only do they jack off, sometimes it's their entire identity is jacking off. <laughs> they have five. They can have four screens. It's just big fucking four screens and big dicks. <laughs> of course they can. And they gather. They, and they're they, hunters. <laughs> and they love crypto. Girls love crypto, jacking off, and <laughs> all of it. They don't, so the girls haven't had communities. So some might say the reason is because it's not that many of them. No, no. Another word uh, people have used for them is virgin. Some identifying as porno. Oh, stop. Some are identifying as porno sexuals. <laughs> you don't. We don't have to like put every. I'm a bit of a porno sexual. Title on every single thing. People who are primarily or exclusively aroused by porn, <laughs> as well as solo sexuals, but others rarely or never use porn when masturbating. They don't even need it. They love that good shit so much just they just go straight shit? off the fucking straight dome. Straight off the dome. Yeah. Straight off that fucking iron dome. You know what? I, th I bet you people in the bait world, what they do if they're not porno sexuals, just to prove that they're not porno sexuals because it's two conflicting communities, they all have they all have their things on and they're just looking at each other in the Zoom thing. And it's just <laughs> 12 guys in a Zoom thing and they're just not moving. They're all spanking it underneath. But no, you go, that's how much I'm, I fucking just love spanking. I don't even need to be looking at anything. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's that sound? Good, nothing. So we have that. It's like that Zoom jerk off course that that guy was giving. It's very similar to the Zoom jacking it course. Yeah. <laughs> We're jacking it and jacking it and jacking it and jacking it. It's worth noting that much like not all solo sexuals are autosexuals, not all autosexuals are auto romantic. <laughs> really hard to keep up with this shit. Vice is really outdone themselves with this one. Yeah, this is the stuff where you go, maybe we do need a third world war. Well, this is the type of stuff that for sure you come home from your course at school and you go, how is uh, 
you know, how is your how is your course going in um you know, the sexuality in the modern world that I'm paying 50 grand for. You go, oh, I, it's it's very enthralling, Dad. Well, first of all, I learned that, did you know that not all autosexuals are <laughs> solosexuals? And not all solosexuals are autosexuals. Some of them are actually pornosexuals pretending to be autosexuals. <laughs> and solosexuals do not always need porn, but solosexuals and autosexuals can, together actually do consume a lot of porn. I learned this in, uh, if you were to pay world, Dad? <laughs> Dad, if you were Money to pay well world. Money well spent, son. <laughs> Glad I worked overtime for all this. And primarily or solely romantically interested in themselves as opposed to others. Being romantically interested in yourselves is also always But also to have line. to, uh, at the same time, distinguish yourself from the autosexuals. You go, no, no, no. Oh, what? I could see how you could mistake it, too. <laughs> Lesser men have made that mistake. <laughs> I can see how you might do that, but uh, it's uh, way different. <laughs> That's so low. <laughs> sexual feeling. <laughs> sexual. A bit feeling. of a, it is yeah, the only way that solo sexual is most guys that probably are in the Bay World that are solo sexuals. It's just a guy that his wife got really gross and he just doesn't want to do stuff with her. Yeah. And you go, I'm solo sexual. Yeah, I guess. What's the other explanation? I mean Do you think this is like progressive people like fiddling around with how be. fiddling around with how people they can are, have an identity? There's obviously like if anything from the last ten years has taught us is that there is a like community for everything like no people are very much like don't know where they fit into things and they just need to like put a th name on what they are they people are not comfortable just like having nothing i don't know so they're just people are having to find something that they can just say this is who i am this is my tribe and then some people are so deranged that they're saying oh, they're solo sexuals and then they go it's like literally like south korea's north korea i'm not like those autosexuals and they're like <laughs> fighting each other they have they all think they're better than the other one like, uh -huh. like for sure i'm sure if you talk about autosexual they're like fucking solo sexuals <laughs> the guys are fucking nuts <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like <laughs> clowns <laughs> And then the other side, they go, what? You know what kind of shit they do? You've seen these psychos? Yeah, like the auto section is like, we don't have goon caves. Like, we're not nuts. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's four fucking monitors. Anyway, <laughs> looks in the mirror. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, let's <man>. get it on. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> You walk in, the music's playing. I didn't know you have a company. It's like, <laughs> well, where I come from, one's company. <laughs> There's this other one. One, what's a menopause party? Here's what experts say. So they have menopause. Okay, you know what? I think we got to cross over to Patreon. And you know what? We we're getting pretty closer to our bug man goal. Yep. However, we got the Patreon solar pull a quick one on us. Uh, they, they did pull a real fast route. Because they added a, a, a zero, like a tier, tier where you can f subscribe, but like you're not actually watching the episodes because yeah, you, don't you don't pay the five bucks a month or whatever. Yeah. So it is only five bucks a month and we got a million episodes on there. But we do have more because me and Danny had a million viral videos each sure. over the last like fucking three weeks. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And but, if you like, if you are a free uh, subscriber, just consider just bumping her up consider bumping it up just bumping getting, it up we're getting pretty close to doing another just episode bump it up. Of thing. just bump it up just bump it up <laughs> bump it here's the here's the thing you have two options either you get you subscribe to the patreon put some money or danny's gonna have no choice <laughs> other than to find a different patron <laughs> a little someone called the israeli government <laughs> the state of israel <laughs> you have two options you can be his patron <laughs> Or I'm going to start cranking out propaganda. Yeah, who are you? Yeah, there's two options for uh, patrons. <laughs> Patreon.com slash the boys cast. Thank you to everyone who listens. In the last month, we have had uh, probably our biggest growth Absolutely. in listenership um, to a steady amount. So that is obviously very cool on both audio and a little bit on YouTube, too. So appreciate everyone and hope to see you at shows, too. Peace. Yeah.